Gretkin? Here. Moore? Here. Boehner? Here. Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Stand for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Faith Bradham, tell us why you want to be on the Airport Board of Trustees. Um, I was made aware of the opportunity um, by my father. He's a leader in the community. Um, he told me you guys were looking for some women to be on the board. Um, I'm a young developing professional. I would like to see what I'm able to contribute to the board as well as, um, you know, give back to the city and maybe learn a few new skills. Questions? You're still working the bank, right? I do. I'm the branch manager now at the Hamilton Boulevard location of U.S. Bank. Okay. Good. Great. Thanks for applying. Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you for really. applying. All right. Thank you. We'll let you know. Okay, items 3 through 15 are the consent agenda today. Consider them to pass unanimously. If you want to speak on any of these items, please come up to the podium as I read them. If you want to speak on an item not on the agenda, on the agenda come up under citizen concerns. Remember to always state your name and address for the record, and remember to limit your comments to three minutes. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Three is the reading of the City Council minutes of June 21st, 2021. Four is a motion accepting the annual evaluation of the Arts Center Director. Five is a resolution authorizing a Regional Sports Authority District Grant application to the Iowa Economic Development Authority. Six is a resolution temporary closing various streets in the downtown area on July 31st for the historic 4th Street car, Classic Car Show and Cruise Fundraiser. Seven are re resolutions assessing a $500 civil penalty to the Floyd Park Golf Course, 2810 Ordway Avenue for violation of the Iowa Beer, Wine, and Liquor License Laws. Eight is a resolution assessing unpaid Skywalk operation charges against the Sioux City Hotel. Nine are actions adopting construction documents. A is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Siouxland Expo Center parking lot expansion. B is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Transit Center maintenance garage parking lot repair. I thought we just did a bunch of repair there. Oh, the parking garage. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. C is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the annual sidewalk ramp project. Ten are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving amendment number one to the consulting services agreement with the VORA for assistance at the 28th Street landfill. B is, you're bidding that next year for sure, Bob? B is a resolution approving consulting services agreement with Evora for the 28th Street land post closure monitoring and, and regulatory assistance. C is a resolution granting a permit to Fibercom to maintain underground cable near South Lewis Boulevard. D is a resolution approving renewal option number one to the contract with LP Building Services for the Skywalk. E is a resolution supporting an econo Iowa Economic Development application to the Workforce Housing Tax Credit Program by Bertrand Construction. F is a resolution supporting an Iowa Economic Development Authority application to Workforce Housing Tax Credit Program by Roy Dave. Mayor? Yes. Just on, on those two items on 10E, Bertrand, and 10F, Roy Dave, I just want to uh, congratulate them and thank them for developing uh, Bertrand Construction's got the 14 single family uh, units, which will add to our shortage of housing that we have and Roy Dave has 18 residential townhouse units and so that's going to help go that we were taking steps in the right direction by adding uh, housing where we have a real sh shortage so thanks to those two projects for increasing our housing units okay. G is a resolution approving a consulting services agreement with McClure Engineering for the 38th Street Booster Station Improvement Project. 
H is a resolution approving an amendment number one to the health reimbursement plan with Gallagher Benefit Services Proprietary Health Invest HRA plan. I is a resolution approving an agreement with ABM for the management of airport and downtown parking facilities. 11 are actions relating to personnel. A is a resolution approving an employee's benefit and compensation guide for employees covered by the Ask Me Iowa Council 61 Local 212. Field service is an operations unit, technical and clerical unit, and Sioux City Airport, Sioux Gateway Airport unit. B is a resolution approving an employee benefits and compensation guide for employees under the PATS personnel man, manual. 12 are actions relating to property. A is a resolution inviting proposals for the lease of land in the Donner Park Urban Renewal Area, announcing the intent to accept the proposal of Siouxland Youth Hockey and scheduling a hearing. B is a resolution proposing lease Center Street Park to Westside Little League and scheduling a hearing. 13 are applications for cigarette, tobacco, nicotine, vapor permits. See the list come forward if you have questions. 14 are applications for beer, liquor license. See the list come forward if you have questions. 15 are receipt of minutes. See the list come forward if you have questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those items? Lisa, would you let the record show that on 13A, subparagraph 10, I'm abstaining, conflict of interest. And 14A, 1A, under hard rock, abstaining because of conflict of interest. And then 14A, 3B, another hard rock. And then 14B, 1A, hard rock. 14B3A part. Yeah. Gail, I didn't know if you wanted to say a few words about the annual report or not, or if you just came down to to back your man and <laughs> show support. Thank you, Alex. I'm Gail Ament. I live at 905 38th Street in Sioux City. I am the, uh, the chair of the Board of Trustees of the Sioux City Arts Center. Uh, have had that, that pleasure for a couple of years now. And, and I thank you for the opportunity to give a very positive report and evaluation of our director, Todd Behrens. We're so proud of the job that he has carried out in this very difficult year. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, no, thank you. I would agree. Thank you. Thanks, Todd, for the job you do, very much so. No, pass 5 0. Yes. Okay. 16 is resolution authorizing a 90 day delay in demolition of the properties, 2105 South Cecilia Street. I'll move that. Second. Got that burn job? It is, isn't it? Fire jet, fireplace burnout passes five zero. Yeah, yeah, that house was burned. Good. We're saving. Good for you. Seventeen is a motion authorizing city staff to move forward with construction plans for the Stone Park Boulevard reconstruction project. I'll move it. Second. Good afternoon, Gordon Fair, city engineer. Yes, I sure can. What we have here is uh, we're doing a um, reconstruction of Stone Park Boulevard from West Clifton all the way over to a Broken Kettle. And at the request of a couple of homeowners there on Broken Kettle, they were um, they were asking about connection into the sanitary sewer and if we were bringing it forward or bringing it to those locations. Uh, we were not intending to at that time because there was no existing sanitary, um, but apparently one of the homeowners does have a fa failing septic. So we looked into the design of it, of uh, bringing it from where we left off, which you'll see right about here is where it was going to stop at, uh, well, I don't have the address on there, I apologize, on Stone Park Boulevard. And um, 
we got an estimate from the engineer, the design engineer, to extend it over to Broken Kettle and uh, long enough with enough infrastructure to provide service to those four homes. That is the limit of what we can do with the sanitary there. And we're even making exceptions with bringing it up to the frost level. So we're putting in insulation. So it's going to cost an approximate $115,000 to be able to provide those four homes to be able to connect into it. They may have to do some on-site work with connecting their basements to this, where they may have to have ejector pumps or an NE1 pump of some sort. Um, but the question to you is whether or not to um, ask, uh, give us permission to proceed with that design. Later, we will have to come up with what the actual cost was for permit fees, and that'll have to be approved by you for through resolution. Why would anybody pay twenty five thousand dollars? Twenty more than that, almost. It'll be about twenty, almost twenty nine thousand. Yeah, if why, it comes in, why would in. anybody pay that when they can put a separate thing in their backyard? Uh, actually. Uh, a couple of those homes won't be able to. It's not the septic tanks, it's the fields, the leach fields. And it looks like those properties are below or won't have room for expansion. That is a health department requirement. The, the 3615 Stone Park, they, they do appear to have enough property to it, but apparently they are interested. Well, that's funny because a friend of mine's on West 19th, just west of West Middle School, is putting a new septic tank in because there's no sewer out there at all. And he has a lot smaller lots than these, so how's he doing it? And that's, that, that's something that the health department is in charge of. Not an expansion, is it? This isn't an expansion. Their septic tanks go bad. They, they got to... That's their option is putting another septic tank in. I don't think the health department can tell you you have to hook on to sewer if it doesn't exist in that area. I mean, there's houses all over the place that have septic tanks in Sioux City. Gordon, they're requesting this as an option of, so that yeah, they don't have to replace it. Yeah, they, they've requested the homeowner, two of the right. homeowners of that. Right, but it's cost you $115,000. Right. Four people. Different if you got some of those guys up off Rebecca Street because they could come into that now. But is there that opportunity? Yeah, if you expanded up north off of Rebecca ever or no? Can't do that in the future, uh, right? The homeowners up there didn't. We didn't look into it that far because it was outside no, the might, scope yeah. of this project. Well, you're putting a manhole there, so for that reason, I would guess, aren't you? Uh, that no, that manhole, that that proposed manhole. On uh, the black line? No, that's just because it's an angle point. But p that's where they can come into it if yep. they do. Is yes, that point. is correct. That's yes. what it, yeah. dump it right there. Mm -hmm. If you could, yeah. yeah they, it could be extended up there if it, the conditions are right. <clears throat> What's the council want to do? I'm fine with doing it. I think um, they need... The sewer uh, line, and I wish we would have negotiated with the homeowners ahead of time so yeah. we knew what that was, because they're not going to like the fee when you tell them it's more to hook on than what it is to put an septic tank in. So there's no encouragement to. But we don't know what that fee is going to be yet for them to actually their expense to link onto it. Right, they can put a whole septic system in for like 10000 Yes, if, if they have the room, that is correct. But but you're don't telling they have me an if 3605 Broken Kettle, if their septic tank fails, they can't put a new one in? No, I'm not in charge of that. That's, again, a count. But is that what they've communicated to you, Gordon? Uh, I can't remember if it's that one or 3617. They must have a leach field already if they have a septic system. That's right. So... If their tank is failing, they would just need a new tank and use the existing field. I don't. I guess I don't understand that. 
No, usually it is the tank, uh, the, the, field the field that's the failing. Field. Not the tank, because a tank, like you said, a tank can be just replaced. Right. Very, well, cheaper than going out into the street. Yes, I, do, I don't want to surprise them with these fees that it's going to take to hook up. Are they, are they, are they aware of them, the possibility, or even a range of what it might cost them? Yeah, uh, we have discussed some of this with them. Well, with two of them anyway. The others, no. Have we tried to get a hold of the others? Up? No, not at this point. We went to the maximum of what that system could do and because it was so close. Well, like Mr. Gretkin, I can also support it. Yeah, I think it's fine to provide for them, absolutely. I just don't want them to be shell-shocked if it's going to cost them $10,000 to hook up. Well, and if they, change, if they decide not to, the two that, there are two that aren't aware of this, or they are aware of it, but they haven't committed to it? Or? No, no one's gonna, none of them have committed to it. And if they choose not to do it, uh, eventually... I suspect you'll have a need for it, and it's it would be a lot easier now to do that, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. Because of the reconstruction? Yeah. Uh, not just because of the, all of that. The reconstruction, going over the channel, the, the, the new box culvert that's going to go in underneath uh, Stone Park. Are you putting stubs outside the street? I'm sorry, what? Are you going to put stubs outside of the street? Uh, well, that could be part of the design. Yeah, it'll be wise. We'll be put in, yes, outside of the street. So you're actually putting them out in case they ever need them so we don't have to air the street up. Yes. I would say yes. Vote. Passes 4-0, or 4-1, I vote no. 18 is a motion authorizing city staff to negotiate with Black and Beach for the sanitary storm sewer master plans. Somebody else can move, move this it. bad boy. Move it. Second. Questions on that or? Passes 4-0, or 4-1, I vote no. 19 is a motion authorizing city staff to negotiate with JEO Consulting for the Downtown Infrastructure Reconstruction pl Master Plan. And both of these, Gordon, are just set out to give us a vision of what we could do, need to be doing to look at future developments, what's possible for growth expansion, and just have a better understanding of what we have, like an inventory of our product, both of these, right? More the storm and sanitary master plans for what you just stated. But for the uh, downtown one, it's more of a organizational one and community outreach of that. Because it's most of the infrastructure, well, all the infrastructure is already in there. It, but it needs to be built. But it's to connect with those people and to plan the reconstruction. Where to start and where to end. Where to start, where to end, and coordinate it with property owners and business owners. Move the item. Second. Thanks, Gordon. I'm on a roll today, four to one, I vote no. <laughs> Twenties resolution approving an agreement with ma for maintenance of the stormwater retention system between Chesterman Company, Brickyard Developments, Green Valley Floyd Golf Course in the city. I'll move it. I 
still have questions on this. I, I don't understand if they don't maintain. We have a history of people not maintaining ditches in this town. So you have to sue the people that have signed the agreement or own the property. And will that follow? So when we don't have title insurance, Mr. Moore reads the abstract in 10 years, it'll show that you're responsible for this ditch. Will it be on the title of that property? We can record the agreement. Oh, we need a second first. That's second. There we go. Thank you. Nicole Dubois, city attorney. Uh, there are potential easement agreements that are also uh, up for council vote this afternoon, which will be recorded on the land. The maintenance <coughs> agreement could also be recorded. The way that it's currently drafted is that if it is not maintained, um, the city would pursue it as a nuisance, um, requiring abatement and costs against those that are responsible for not maintaining it. Brickyard Developers is the entity that is currently the most responsible under the terms of the agreement going forward. I just want to make sure that the city doesn't end up on the maintenance on these ditches. We've accepted some in the past year, which was not in the city's best interest, in my opinion, but that's beside the point. But we don't need to accept any more, and we need to have, make sure we have a mechanism and yes. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to deny it. I'm bothered. I go down there golfing, and when they're, they, the, the thing's already graded. We're, I mean, we're locked into yeah. this. It's just, that bothers me. I don't know. It just bothers me a little bit that, I mean, do we have health? Do we have insurance on the, these guys that are out there grading? Um, I received from Dan Heiser wrote, three insurance certificates, uh, one from Birkyard Developers, one from um, the company that's doing the construction, and one from a landscaping company, which I believe is a sub subsidiary. It's Dan Heiser Oates company. Um, so three, and I believe there's one additional one. Um, the third one is Circle, uh, which is a Kevin Alexander company, I believe, if I'm correct about that. So they had provided insurance based on the right of entry agreement that was in place before so they could go in and do some tree degrubbing. Um, so we do have that at this time. Well, and there's the, a lot more tree grubbing. They've got a ditch, they've got a lake. No, I agree. There's a grading permit that covers more than that. And then there's also indemnification language in the easement agreements uh, that will come back before the council in two weeks. And does, does Did that require a grading permit for this project? Did they get one? Yes, I, Gordon is here that can address that. Gordon Fair, city engineer. Yes, they did apply for a grading permit and it was all approved. You can get one on somebody else's property as long as somebody says it's okay. Okay. I'm glad you raised that question, though, Mayor, because if, if the agreement does not get recorded, then it won't necessarily be binding on successors and assigns. <clears throat> well, I was practicing a little law there. I thought I wanted to make sure you've got some, you know, it takes you a little longer to read an abstract when that's in there, so you're going <laughs> to... Thank you. i to make sure you make a buck. <laughs> Passes 5021 is a resolution proposing to grant a permanent non exclusive easement at 4300 Donner Avenue, Petitioner Chesterman's Company. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5022 is a resolution. Proposing to grant a permanent non-exclusive easement at 4300 Donner Avenue, the petitioner's brickyard developers. I'll move that. Second. Passes 5-0. Need a motion and a second to waive the rules and allow the consideration of an additional item, resolution appointing Thomas L. Pingle as utility director for the Wastewater and Environmental Services Department. I'll move that. Second. 
Committee Council, I'd like to introduce you to Tom Pingle. He uh, has been selected as our uh, new Utilities Director for Wastewater and Environmental Services. Uh, Tom comes to us from McClure Engineering, but if you recognize him, uh, he was Operations Manager at our Wastewater Treatment Plant until about three and a half years ago. Uh, enjoyed working with him back then. Uh, he has a grade four uh, wastewater license, uh, works for McClure as a wastewater and water expert. Um, and has already participated in some phone calls we've had with industries and is very aware of our plant, its needs, and how best to run it already. So we're excited that Tom uh, accepted our offer and he's here with us today. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Yeah, excited You're to welcome. have you, Tom. I'm excited too. I think we have a lot of opportunities down there at the wastewater. I think we gave uh, city manager some direction too that if we we're gonna go this route and split this to have those specialties, I think that those are some of the expectations is really thinking outside the box and looking at what opportunities are available. I think that especially with wastewater, I mean, you've seen obviously with the renewable fuels, but then looking at um, whether it's the fertilizer project, a solar project down there. I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunities to invest, expand and grow um, and, and think you're the man for the job. So appreciate you applying. I, I agree. Yep. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. Welcome. Thank you. This is on the waiver, voting. Moore. Aye. Janer. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Gretkin. Aye. Now on the resolution, I'll move it. Second. Janer. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Gretkin. Aye. Moore. Aye. Okay. Now I move that we waive the rules to allow consideration of an additional item resolution appointing Brad Pitts as utility director for U water and underground utilities department. I'll move that. Second. Okay. Everyone knows Brad already. Uh, Brad is, was currently our wastewater water superintendent, and he will be uh, overseeing our water department and underground utilities. Uh, he's most re recently served as interim director for all utilities. Um, and, uh, Welcome. Me too. Thank you. I'm going to cut into your Congratulations. hunting time. You know about I was going to say. You weren't excited about overseeing all of it? No. no. Yeah. Brad, Welcome to your new role. <laughs> <laughs> now he's rethinking it. On the waiver. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Now on the resolution. Second. Brad, Waters? Brad, I just want to point out thank you for your responsive, timely responses to any concerns citizens have. That's been really important. I think you both will make a good team. So I look forward to good things. The only downside is we have high expectations. <laughs> both of you. I agree. But thank you, Brad. Waters? Aye. Gretchen? Aye. Moore? Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Uh, Mayor we don't meet next week, so you don't have to worry about missing items. This, you're good. Well, I was, I was just going to apologize for having to have this on <laughs> as an emergency. Um, we were aware we did this. It just slipped our minds, and I want to apologize. <laughs> All right. Citizen concerns. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, Mr. Gretkin. No, sir, none. Thank you. Ms. Shaner. We have a parade this week. I just want to remind everyone to come downtown. It's a Mardi Gras parade. Uh, have some food. Have some fun. Have, get together Thursday, 6 p.m. See you then. We'll have some well, some beads and candy. Beads and lots of candy. Right. Mr. Waters. Um, no, I would share that excitement for the upcoming parade. I would also remind people of Downtown Live, that music series um, that's happening. It's expanded this year. There's a bigger area to have that. Um, so I would encourage you to go down and check those out. Unfortunately, last week um, had to be moved indoors due to the, the rain, but we need the rain quite a bit. So I'm glad that that was coming as well. So. Look forward to next week. I would also um, remind folks about the Saturday in the Park Festival. Um, ask that they celebrate responsibly, um, uh, starting things off on Friday this year. And so I'm really excited about some of the acts that we have. I would remind people um, that we will have a fence around and there will be, I think, six different points of entry uh, where you'll be asked to um, maybe show any belongings. want to make sure that it's a safe and fun festival this year starting Friday and going into Saturday looking forward to that thank you for all the volunteers and the sponsors that are 
making this possible. It should be a big celebration. So looking forward to it. Um, the final thing that I would just say, and I don't want to steal Dan's thunder. I know he'll probably bring it up as well, but I would ask anyone uh, celebrating uh, Independence Day this 4th of July to please do so responsibly when shooting off fireworks. Um, I, I know there are certainly people in my neighborhood and judging by my emails and phone calls, uh, apparently in other neighborhoods as well, that didn't understand that there is a city ordinance um, with very, very direct times of when you're able to shoot off those fireworks. So I just please encourage you to do so, not only thinking about yourself, but also your neighbors um, and those that are impacted by shooting off a of fireworks. So please do so responsibly. We don't need you to end up in the ER, any property to, um, uh, be damaged where we would need to call fire and rescue. Um, and then lastly, where the police would have to be called because it was outside of the time and the window to do so. So please be respectful of those individuals. I would thank Dan for his efforts um, to get out that message and that word. I've seen the commercials, um, the PSAs a number of times. And so hopefully people heed the message or at least are hearing it this week. Appreciate, That's all I That's appreciate all I that, Alex. And um, you gave a good interview on the news too talking about the fireworks. July 3rd, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. July 4th, 1 o'clock p.m. to 11 o'clock p.m. Let's please pull together and have a real safe 4th of July. That's all I have, Mayor. I think with the permission of the council, I would send a commendation to Danny Holman, who's retiring after 16 years as the president <coughs> of the ASME Union, because we've had some relationships with him, if that's all right with everybody. And yep, sounds good. Have you Thank get you. that ready, Bob? Maybe work with, uh, my brain just went dead. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. All right, I move we adjourn. Second. Waters? Aye. Gretkin? Aye. Moore? Aye. Chainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Okay. Thanks, everyone.